Hi everyone, this is the next Earth Science Review video. We're in the groundwater topic right now, the Wedgel unit, and today we're going to be talking about porosity. Okay, so if you look at this picture, porosity is the amount of space between sediments. So if you look at my, my examples here, I got an example right here, and an example over here. So just replace the word spaces with the word porosity in the sentence, and that will give you an idea. So it says, uh, we got two examples here. One has high porosity, this one has low porosity. So we would say more space, less space. So porosity is the amount of space between the particles. Look how much space there is between this example over here on the left. This is less space. Same with this example. High porosity, large spaces, low porosity. Look, we filled in all the space, so this has a lower porosity since the spaces are smaller. Okay, so you're not gonna see it as spaces, but that's a way you can think about it as we talk about it. So wherever you hear the word porosity, just you're thinking about the amount of space between the particles. So here we go. What determines how much water the ground can hold? It's its porosity. It's the percentage of pore space in between the sediment. Generally, the sediment is, we're talking about soil, dirt, uh, pieces of rock. So generally, things are able to flow through it. It's maybe a liquid like water. So we can fill up soil particles like this. We could fill up the pore spaces with water. The more pores there are, the more water it can be, that can be held. So if you go back here, the high porosity right here can hold more water because there's more space. This one can't hold as much water because there's not enough, not as much space. Okay, porosity is the amount of open space in a material. So this is a, even some rocks are porous, they have spaces in between the sediment even though they look like they're a solid. Okay, so we got four different columns here. The question is, number one, infer why water will get stuck traveling through column D. Now these are uniform size particles. Uniform size means the same. But look, they're so tiny. So since they're so tiny, they're not going to have a lot of space in between them. They're going to be so packed, be very packed. As opposed to uniform size particles of 0.2, this is going to be less packed, so you would have more space. So column D, the particles are small, so they're more packed. So the water is going to have problem getting through there. It's not going to have any space to flow through. Maybe eventually it will, but it's going to take a very, very long time. So we're going to actually skip number two for now. You don't have to worry about that one. So here's a picture of high porosity and low porosity. You can see high porosity has a lot more spaces and low porosity is not a lot of spaces. Okay. Number 61. Describe one characteristic of the sandstone layer that allowed part of this layer to become saturated with water. How could a, le uh, a rock become saturated with groundwater? Saturated means filled up. Well, the only way, based on what topic we're doing, is porosity. Sandstone has spaces between the particles. So the water can soak into it, it's sort of like a sponge. Sponge looks solid, but it actually can hold water because it's got little holes in it. Which characteristics determine porosity? Okay, so now we're going to talk about certain characteristics give you higher porosity than other characteristics. So the shape is the first thing. Different shapes of the sediments can give you different porosity. Just look at my two examples here. If you have particles that are packed like this versus this, which one has a higher porosity? The one with the more space. In this case, it would be B. The round particles stack, leave spaces in between them. These don't. So this would be low porosity because of the shape. 
this would be higher porosity because of the shape. Packing. As particles become more packed together, the porosity decreases. If you smush stuff together, there's going to be less space in between them. It makes sense. So if you have really, really small particles that are very packed, you get low porosity. If you get less packed, you have higher porosity. Remember, porosity is space. Less packed together, more space. If you're spread out with a class of 30 kids in a gym, there's way more space. If you pack together 30 kids in a closet, that's less space. Same exact thing with sediment. So the relationship is, as the amount of packing increases, porosity will go down. So this is inverse. There's a lot of relationships in this topic, so you might want to write this down. Number three, sorting. Sorting just means the same size particles. So if you have a lot of same size particles, like in this picture, you have high porosity. Look at all the space. As opposed to unsorted, this is different size particles. Look, all the tiny particles fill in the gaps of the big ones. So this would be low porosity, there's less space. So as material becomes more sorted, your porosity goes up. Next one, size of particles. Check this out. You got A and B. Which one of these do you think has more pore space? Believe it or not, they're actually equal. The size of the particles does not have an effect on porosity. Even though these are six of them that are larger, look at how big the spaces are. They're huge. As opposed to littler size particles, but more of them, there's more amounts of these spaces. They will actually add up to be equal. So this has bigger pores at A, but fewer of them. Remember, pores are the spaces. B has smaller pores, but more of them. So they end up being equal. So this is a good example, small, medium, large. If you filled all of these up with water completely, they would have identical amount of water that could fit in the cups. They each have the same porosity. So yeah, you need to make sure the particles are the same. You can't have like different shaped particles in these ones. That Your example wouldn't work. They have to all be the same shape. So as the particle size increases, the porosity stays the same. This is a constant relationship. This is the only outlier right here. This is the weird one to remember. All right, and that's where we're going to end off today for porosity. I will see you on the next one. Bye.